joined in studio by artist and Bush Radio beneficiary Andy Corsi, as well as on the line by the station's programs integrator, Adrian Lowe. A very good morning to both of you and welcome to the morning show. Andy, let me start with you because you are right here. You're a beneficiary of Bush Radio's mm -hmm. programs and you even went on to produce and host a radio show on the station. What role has Bush Radio played in your development, firstly as an artist mm -hmm. and uh, again as a, as a radio broadcaster? Well, I have to say that like when I joined them in 2012, it really taught me how to communicate with people, generally like um, even like producing content mm. and being able to express myself on platform, media platforms. I remember when I was working in the um, newsroom, uh, I wasn't able to articulate myself, but as the, 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 the year went and my time with them went, I was able to communicate and be able to express myself. And I think Bush Radio is very important for young practitioners coming up in Cape Town as it um, allows you to express yourself. And you don't get um, a lot of media spaces that allow you to um, try, try out your, your, your ideas as mm. someone who's new in the media space. So Bush Radio has allowed that for me. And it has allowed me to grow as an individual and within like, the art space and media space as well. And what was it like having that creative freedom in that space, in that radio space? Well, you know, when you come up with an idea, you want people to be able to listen to you. So I think people like Adrian and Brenda and Lusanda at the time allowed us to come up with these ideas. But I remember there, there was a program called Newsline. Yeah. I mean, 2012, I, I hated Newsline. But now I understand the importance of it and I have all of these ideas and I wish I could go back to Bush Radio to, to implement these ideas and, you know, um, come up um, with these ideas and, and be able to have like that space where people listen mm. and engage you. And I think, again, for, 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 for that point, it's, it's really important to have a space like Bush Radio for young people to be able to trust and, and engage. All right, let's bring Adrian into the conversation. A very good morning, Adrian. I mean, can you tell us about the various programs that Bush Radio has provided for young people since inception and the role it's played in, K in the Cape Town community at large? Well, I think the first thing to talk about youth programming would be the Children's Radio Education Workshop, which we established in 1996, where young people actually got to produce host uh, and were responsible for the editorial of the, the content. Mm. I think what Bush Radio does is we, we consider ourselves a a crash for media, mm. literally a crash, where people get to work, understand with discipline, uh, but get to understand what is media, how they can use media, and how they can use radio in particular to develop their ideas and their content and their, their voices. I think that's the critical thing. <laughs> Bush Radio, like Andy said, uh, gives you the, the, the platform. It's, it's literally the space where you develop your ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's been so many young people that have come through the station. Uh, people like you know, Dave Marshall, Coquette Mr. Chani, Sandra Rosie, the community, the list is endless. And what they learn at Bush Radio is really that it means a tool to express themselves. Whether they continue in the media field directly, or like Andy with photography and radio and, and using multimedia, right. that's the key thing. It, it, it's to get young people's uh, voices out there and get them to develop their ideas. We merely the facilitators. Bush Radio is the facilitator of that. Now, and uh, um, Adrian, let's talk about how long the station has been struggling yeah. and how has the station ability yeah. to serve the community been affected? Well, community media in South Africa is in crisis generally. Uh, we've had, you know, empty promises that haven't been performed mm. uh, in terms of funding, etc. We need to look at the model of funding for community media in the country. It is ridiculous that a small station like Bush or Radio Seminary or you know, the, the stations in the Northern Cape has to compete with large enterprises, large commercial entities for a very small advertising case. Mm. So we need to look at that and then we engage as Bush Radio and then also through our, our, our body, the National Community Radio Forum, with government. I remember years ago there was the promise of 30% of the ad spent from government. That was never really implemented. Uh, when we raised it with the new minister in the presidency, mm. we were shocked that, you know, Two, three years later, this is not really being done. So, you know, we he, 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 uh, contacted GCIS and we had a meeting with everyone and he 
was saying that we could be implemented right now. Mm. However, for a station like Bush Radio, the day-to-day uh, running needs to be fulfilled. Hence, we started our Get Game campaign. And we're asking our people, like we did back in the early 90s, to actually assist the station. We can't wait for a medical or we can't wait for government to intervene. We need to ask the people again, the people we serve. And unfortunately, we're asking the tourists on the tour to assist the station with the day-to-day cost. Yeah. Um, you know, the young people that come to Bush Radio don't drive fancy cars, they have to jump in a taxi, uh, or leave us taxi, they need to dodge gangsters in the morning, right, head to the station, this train. So, we, we need help right now. Um, you know, the long-term engagement with government and the NDDA, etc. that is happening. And we're glad, uh, we, we actually appreciate the minister spent an entire day with, with the media sector. Yeah. But however, our issue is right now. Uh, you know, we have landlords that, that's on our case. We have, we have rent to pay. We have electricity to pay. We have same tech transmission fees to pay. And yeah, no, I find that, that you are absolutely um, imperatively seeking and you need at the moment. And one of those young people who has had to endure some of those um, environments to get to Bush Radio is right here in studio with us. Andy, um, what do young people still stand to gain from an organization like Bush Radio? I mean, it's, it's again, like I can't stress this enough. It's very imperative, especially in Cape Town where... There aren't many like media houses like Bush Radio, like Adrian says, it's like a crash for media. Yeah. So a, a space like the Bush Radio allows you to bring these crazy ideas that you have. For me, that's very imperative because we have a lot of people in Cape Town who are up and coming, who are interested in media. And what better place to try that at than, than Bush Radio? I mean, it, it has done immensely a lot and I can trace back all the, some, some of the skills that I have yeah. back to Bush Radio. So, very important to have a space like Bush Radio in Cape Town. Okay, let's talk about how the crowdfunding process works. So if I'm sitting this morning watching Andy and I've just heard Adrian talk about the advertising revenue that was promised 30% uh, from government would go to community stations, that has not uh, yet happened. We'll find out from the communications ministry what has happened since uh, and GCIS, I, I imagine, will come into that conversation as well. How do we fund you through the crowdfunding process so you can go onto the bush radio facebook page and they have a website as well and i think adrian can elaborate some more on that mm. um there's a crowdfunding um, link on there you can press on that and contribute however much you, you you're willing to okay and you as an artist what are you doing right now since uh bush radio days bush radio days now i'm currently um doing a course with market photo workshop i'm finishing that off for the year it's uh, basically around photojournalism and documentary photography okay and on the side i'm busy with music and I'm all, i also do a podcast where i engage other photographers called this audio is visual okay what, what what does the podcast look into with so it's, it's just basically um tracing um individuals who are doing great within the space of photography so the likes of Andy Lebuka, the mm. likes of Tsepiso Mabula, and just speaking to those people who are doing well for themselves, finding out how what their um, processes are, their business ventures look like, yeah. etc. And just trying to um, archive and blueprints for people who are interested in photography and are interested in the career and the business of photography. And in putting together this podcast, Andy, I imagine you use a lot of your experience from Bush Radio <laughs> yeah. to put it Definitely, on air, right? Yeah, like... Um, just like uh, even the audacity of emailing people that you don't even know about that from Bush Radio, like just mm. the confidence of saying, okay, cool, I'm going to email the morning show. Yeah. Someone is going to reply. I enjoy right. that very much, and it's all thanks to Bush Radio. Awesome stuff, Andy, one of the protégés of Bush Radio. Well, we hope that we as South Africans can band together to preserve this historic community media project by donating to the Bush Radio crowdfund. Visit Bush Radio 89.5 FM on Facebook, for more details on how you, as a South African, can help save this journey.